Almost 20 years ago, when the iconic Concorde was grounded, many thought that was the end of supersonic air travel. But innovators like Boom Supersonic are refusing to give up on the dream, with the company recently unveiling what it says is the production design of an aircraft called the Overture. This promises intercontinental flights of up to 4,250 nautical miles at speeds of Mach 1.7 and carrying between 65 and 80 passengers. The world has always needed more speed. Since time immemorial, we've made transportation faster and faster and faster. And as we've sped up travel, we've actually found that we travel more. But we've had a half a century of no progress in speed. And today we are in this beautiful moment where we have both the technology and the market to, for a real supersonic renaissance that won't just be for a few people, but will be for at the starting point for tens of millions of people, and eventually for everyone who flies. So imagine if we could leave London and arrive in New York actually 90 minutes before we left, just three and a half hours on the airplane. Imagine if Sydney, Australia were as easy to get to as Hawaii is today. Imagine Seattle to Tokyo in this almost impossibly fast four and a half hours. And what that means is that a business trip from the US to Asia that today takes a minimum of three calendar days, we can do just 24 hours. The company says it will be ready to start producing the Overture in 2025, with its planned new factory in North Carolina expected to deliver 65 aircraft per year. But first, Boom has to satisfy aviation regulators that the new generation supersonic jet can operate safely and prove to prospective operators that the business case adds up. We're planning to build actually five aircraft that will be part of the flight test campaign, plus a ground structural test article and a ground systems lab that we call the Iron Bird, which we broke ground on actually just a few weeks ago. It's really about designing an aircraft that's not just efficient at high speed, but also delivers on our values of safety and sustainability. So we've gone to a four engine design, for example, which allows us to go to a little bit higher bypass ratio for more efficient thrust and quieter thrust. We've got a new gull wing design that's a balance of high speed efficiency and low speed performance, where low speed performance both means stable, controllable for safe takeoff and landing, but also being 20% more efficient aerodynamically, which means less thrust, which means quieter operation. Boom believes the Overture can offer new dimensions to airline business models, opening up multiple new routes with a completely new value proposition. Overture 1 is going to operate at business class like fares, so three profitable at fares three quarters lower than what Concorde is charged on. How many seats is appropriate? Roughly the same number of seats we find in business class on a wide body aircraft. So 65 seats makes it possible for airlines to achieve great load factors, not just here and there, but on hundreds of routes around the planet. Meaning this aircraft scales, we think we're going to need hundreds if not thousands of these aircraft, and it's going to touch tens of millions of lives every year. We found that 91% of business class passengers would buy a supersonic ticket tomorrow if the airplane were ready. So with, this is something that's gonna enable upgrading from the experience we have today, and most likely gonna enable more traveling. We might fly across the Atlantic more often when it's only three and a half hours, not seven, eight, nine hours. Only two airlines, British Airways and Air France, operated Concorde for a prolonged period of time. So which operators does Boom see adding Overture to commercial fleets? We have existing airline agreements with Japan Airlines and with United. United was the first airline last year to place a firm order with meaningful non-refundable deposits for 15 overtures, which is more than the Concords that ever entered service. Ultimately, we think this is something that every major international airline is going to need. We're seeing accelerating interest from airlines and we're gonna make another airline announcement here in the not too distant future. Unacceptable noise has commonly been deployed as an argument against the use of supersonic aircraft. And more recently, mounting concern over aviation's damage to the environment from carbon dioxide and other emissions has raised new questions about the consequences of air travel. So Overture flies at two times speed over water. Um, so there's a sonic boom created where no one's there to hear it. Over land, we fly just under the speed of sound at Mach 0.94, so about a 20% speed advantage over land, no sonic boom. Uh, so that takes care of the sonic boom question. We just make them where no one's there to hear them. The other question is how do we become friendly to airport communities? When the announcement comes out, supersonic is coming to your airport, we want you to be excited, not worried your windows are gonna rattle. So this is designed for quiet operation. Uh, we meet 
uh, or exceed the latest, most stringent noise standards that apply to say, today's uh, subsonic aircraft. We do that with an efficient wing, with clean, quiet, efficient turbofan engines, and not using any afterburners. Some would say this compromise dilutes the advantage of deploying supersonic aircraft on routes over land. And others question how the sort of performance promised by Overture can be delivered on a net zero carbon basis. So the more coastal a city pair is, the bigger the time savings advantage. Uh, over land, 20%, which is meaningful. Over water, two times, which is even more meaningful. And one of the things we've developed is some patented route optimization software that controls and optimizes the routing of the aircraft so it can spend more time over water, less time over land for greater time savings. So there are some routes that we might not expect to have meaningful time savings that actually do. Overture is going to be net zero carbon always from day one. And this matters to us because we believe in a future where more people go more places more often. So we can't just make a little bit of progress on carbon. We need to go all the way to net zero and we challenge ourselves to do it from day one. How? By building the aircraft as the first one that's 100% compatible with sustainable aviation fuel. No blends, no additives required. And this means that we can actually operate net zero. So we're not just making this a feature of the airplane, it's part of our airline agreements as well. Last year when United announced its order of Overture aircraft, they announced that from day one, it will be operated on sustainable aviation fuel on a net zero carbon basis. And you're gonna find that going forward, that's gonna be a hallmark of every customer agreement we announce. Boom has been engaging with both the FAA and the ESA on the regulatory process for bringing the new aircraft to market. The company recently signed up several well-established aerospace groups to join the Overture partnership, including Collins, Safran, and Eaton. Northrop Grumman is going to pursue possible special missions and military applications for the 21st century supersonic jet. <laughs>